Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends. I hope you are having a great day and a fantastic start to your weekend. If you don't know me, my name is Teresa and I love all things makeup, beauty and skincare. So every weekend over here on this channel, I talk about the new makeup releases that are somewhat notable. So they are gathered by myself, but you guys are also fantastic and tag me in things that you want me to discuss. So I want to display those names right now. You are fantastic at giving me information, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, etc. I so appreciate it. But I also want to say a massive thank you to my YouTube community members. You are just fabulous humans. What else can I say, really? I will be doing another giveaway with my YouTube communities very, very soon. Um, the fabulous Godiva did select to go for the rose quartz palette. I will be sending that very very soon. That does mean that there's one more rose quartz palette as part of the, the giveaway. There's a lot of stuff actually in that giveaway and I also added some extra bits because I'm a little bit naughty. But we do have quite a few things to talk about. So grab your tea, your coffee or your beverage of choice and let's just get into it. The first thing that I actually wanted to talk about is not so much about a new makeup release as it is about sort of makeup news in general. We knew that this was happening, right? The MOCRA, it's also known as the Modernization of Cosmetics Regulation Act, was put in place in 2022. So it went into law in 2022, but it's only just started to enact. That's pretty regular. There's normally a little bit of a, a delay between a law being written and a law actually being enacted. So it does mean that we've had the last two years to become familiar with what is potentially going on. But the very first sort of makeup and beauty brand that we saw actually out and out discussing this was Menagerie Cosmetics. And I'm gonna show you their posts. They said that they wanted to talk about MOCRA and they said that with the arrival of this that they found themselves at a point of transition and it's one that affects not just their brand but a lot of other brands within the community. They said that in, in accordance with the new FDA regulations, it's imperative that we market our products for their intended use. So where we have seen over the last couple of years, uh, people putting in pressed pigments into palettes and saying it's not intended for use around the eyes, they had kind of been skirting around that. MOCRA is now really cracking down on that. This is probably the biggest change to FDA since it really started back in 1938. So as a result of this, they can no longer put these pressed pigments, normally reds and pinks, into an eyeshadow palette and say that it's not intended for use around the eyes. They can't display pictures of people using them in this way and they can't swatch them in this way. So they either have to remove those particular products from their lineup or they have to replace it with Carmine. And that's what Menagerie Cosmetics has elected to do. Uh, historically, they've been a vegan and cruelty-free brand. So this is a really big step for them to actually take. And I've seen a lot of people giving out to the brand, which in my view is not very fair. Uh, the brand themselves, obviously that has been their ethos for so long, it obviously was not an easy choice for them to make. Their hands are very much tied around this piece of legislation. They're basically doing what they legally have to do. What I have found quite interesting is the fact that we've had two years to potentially consider this. And in terms of the FDA and the safe list, Carmine is the only one in terms of like a red pink dye that is actually safe. So I found it quite interesting that nothing else has kind of come to the fore in terms of safety, but I kind of figure that with the enactment of MOCRA that we may actually see much more of an emphasis on finding finding out other pigments that are actually regulated. Now I've seen some people kind of saying, oh, it's not that big a deal, why aren't they putting that in? The thing is, um, we've seen a couple of lawsuits happening over the last couple of years, uh, notably Morphe, Huda, etc., have come into massive question around their use of certain ingredients that didn't quite meet these regulations, and they were trying to bypass them with not for use around the eye. And the FDA have really, really clamped down on this and that's part of what MOCRA 
has actually done. I'm going to show you some additional screenshots as to exactly what this involves. And I think people are seeing this in a very negative fashion of like, oh, it's limiting us. But in terms of consumer rights and safety, this could actually be a very positive movement. You've seen a lot of stagnation when it comes to vegan cruelty-free formulas because people have been kind of very much relying on those pigments that are not safe around the eye and face area. And I do feel like we could actually see some really great innovations if we're looking at this in this way, because if this had happened maybe 30 or 40 years ago, there wouldn't have been the same emphasis on vegan cruelty-free makeup. I think now in 2024, there is a much greater social movement around this. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or two, we see a lot more ingredients that are actually cleared and recognized by the FDA as being safe for use around the eye. They've also introduced some really great things that I think are helpful for us as consumers. They're saying that any facility that manufactures or processes cosmetic products intended for sale in the US, doesn't matter if they're located in the US, have to register with the FDA. I don't know about you, but as a consumer, that kind of puts my mind at ease. We have seen over the last couple of years that products have had some questionable ingredients in them because they haven't been appropriately labeled and they haven't had the appropriate quality assurance. So personally, I quite like this. They say that manufacturers, packers and distributors of cosmetics intended for sale in the US to submit FDA lists of products and ingredient information. I mean, this is, again, I think a very, very positive thing. I think particularly for people who are allergic to specific ingredients, specific products. This is a great uh, safeguarding sort of a measure. So I think this is quite good. In general, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. This could be a great movement in terms of finding more vegan and cruelty free products. I have seen some people kind of saying there is a little bit of like a conspiracy theory around this. I don't personally hold with that. Um, this has been on the cards for the last two years this isn't a massive surprise i do feel that there is enough customer kind of want or desire there to have vegan cruelty free products so again i do think a lot more products are going to come out and be tested and come out and be safe for use around the eye and the face it does mean that we're in a really weird little situation at the moment where we don't really have those options at the moment. It's carmine or not. And that puts people who are vegan cruelty free into a very difficult position for the moment. So I totally empathize, I get it, I'm a vegetarian myself. I prefer to have vegan and cruelty free makeup where I can, but that's, that's, just, that's just me. I do think this is kind of just where we're at at the moment, but I can see things moving for the next while. My general consensus on this is it's not really fair to give out to the brands on this. They are potentially at risk of lawsuit if they go against this. It's they're really clamping down a lot of labels. They're also talking about clamping down on things like clean and non-toxic, which I'm like sitting there kind of going, yes, please do that. So I think this is potentially a good move. We're just at a really weird shaky period where we don't know how it's going to all pan out. But I'm very hopeful that in the next year, two years, maybe three years, we'll start to see more vegan and cruelty-free options that do align with the FDA safety list. And I think this could be great in terms of innovation. I'm kind of for that. Anytime that something like this occurs, we see a lot of problem solving from human beings and trying to find alternatives. So personally, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. Now that I've covered what I wanted to cover in relation to the MOCRA, let's dive into the actual new makeup releases. The very first one is Makeup by Mario, and this is actually available right now. It's the Master Mattes eyeshadow palette, and it's called The Neutrals. This is basically made so that it can be used by itself, but also in conjunction with the more warm neutrals palette that he has. As I said, it's available right now for 59 euro over on the website, but I believe you can get it a little bit cheaper on Sephora but you know options are limited here in Ireland. He says that it's a first of its kind neutral toned eyeshadow palette with 12 creamy buildable shades curated for every skin tone with a feather light matte finish. It's a modern take on 90s neutrals. Each shade strikes the perfect balance between warm and cool to create timeless looks. I have to say I quite like the colour story of this. 
However, 59 euros seems very expensive for an all mattes palette. Now, the mattes would need to be absolutely spectacular for me to pay that. Now he has shown like pictures of it on the eye. He's been very transparent about what shades are used. And they do look quite nice. They look like they blend pretty well. I personally like this color story. I do feel that maybe it would have been better to come out with this a little bit earlier. There are now way more options for shades like this. There's something about this that reminds me a little bit of the Urban Decay Naked Smoky. Do you remember that? Such a good palette, totally underrated at the time. If they ever brought anything back, I think they'd need to bring that one back. I really like the last row. I really enjoy those cool tones. Historically, it's been very difficult to get cool tone palettes, but as I said, we've seen an awful lot more uh, sort of options on that of late. So for example, there's the Morphe 18CT, which kind of covers quite a few of those tones. There's of course the Beauty Bay Smoky palette that came out quite recently and if you combine that with maybe the neutrals you get an awful lot of these tones but at a much reduced price however obviously you're paying for the fact that this is an MUA owned brand Mario is like a celebrity makeup artist I say that kind of with a, a pinch of hmm because it doesn't really mean much to be a celebrity makeup artist but he is very good at what he does. So he kind of deserves that title, in my opinion. Um, he's very, very much known for those kind of glam, but somewhat natural sort of looks. And that takes an awful lot of work and finessing to be able to do that right. I definitely see how this palette could be used by itself, but I also appreciate the fact that it could be used in combination with the current palette um, that he has, the, the Matte's original. And I personally appreciate when you see a brand that is kind of combining their existing products to make it so that it all coheres together. This is very much expected as part of his brand. I do find it a little bit weird that it wasn't that long ago that Kim Kardashian came out with her new brand SKKN and her first palette bears quite a resemblance to this. I wouldn't say it's like an exact dupe. I don't personally find that wildly surprising because obviously Mario is her makeup artist. So she would draw an awful lot of inspiration probably from the tones that he uses on her and the general techniques. If you asked me which one I would have, um, if I'd go for the SKKN or if I'd go for the Makeup by Mario, I'd definitely go for the Makeup by Mario. I have one Makeup by Mario palette and it's his Ethereal Eyes palette. And I personally think it's very, very pretty. I don't think you necessarily need it if you have the Natasha Dinner on a New Glam, which I have, but you know me, I'm stupid and I'll buy things that I don't need. But because I'm trying to get a little bit better, I don't think I'll necessarily get this because I did end up getting the Beauty Bay Smoky. Are you that surprised? And because this is a little bit trickier for me to get here in Ireland, I'd either have to buy through a Makeup by Mario's own website, which would cost quite a bit in terms of duty, shipping, etc. Or I'd have to wait for it to come to Sephora UK and then have to deal with the stuff around that. And for me, I'm just like, I, I don't know. If, however, you're based in the States and you can just amble on into Sephora and you can have a little go at swatching it, could you please let me know what these mattes are like? Because if they're really blendable, really creamy, I am definitely interested because I think the, the more I get into makeup, the more I'm like, okay, as much as I love the sparkly, shimmery, whatever, and Lord knows I do, the, for me, the basis of a really strong eye look is really good mattes. So I am kind of at that point where I'm like, I can kind of understand. I was surprised though that he hasn't kind of said that this is maybe talc free, etc. As I've said before, this has become like more of a trend within makeup. Um, and I say that because I, like trend is a funny word. Like this is more something that we should be seeing. So I'm kind of surprised that as an MUA, the fact that this is becoming much more mainstream that he hasn't integrated that. Maybe he has, but I haven't seen any sort of direct advertisement stating that that's the case. 
it's nice but it's definitely not necessary for me and it seems that a lot of you guys were actually echoing the same thing because when I put it to you guys 20% of you loved it 60% said not for me and 20% said that you were on a no or a low buy then the next thing that we have is milk makeup and this isn't available yet but it is coming soon it's their milk makeup cloud glow foam primer they say it's skincare makeup hybrid that's geared towards no makeup makeup looks enhances moisturizes and evens skin tone allowing your natural glow to shine it applies clear and creates a breathable and smooth base and it's formulated with sativas and apricot extract I mean we're never really going to get away from the no makeup makeup look it is sort of like a classic thing I love how people were like it's a trend and I'm like eh, it's always been there <laughs> the no makeup makeup look has always been a thing I'm for sure interested in this the fact that they're saying it's glow they haven't said that there's any niacinamide in it which is what I was kind of thinking and a few you guys were also thinking that if they're saying it's glow surely there's some amount of niacinamide in it doesn't seem to be based upon what I've looked into so I'm kind of interested to see what the story is there now you guys know I have very dry combination skin it's dry to normal quite acne prone so I'm always interested in something that will give a little bit of moisture that will make it look that I'm not basically a crypt keeper I, I need a little bit more moisture in my skincare and lord knows I try to incorporate that as much as possible I think this is really interesting the foaming bit has me a bit like what on earth is that what is that going to be like that's quite different I feel like milk is a funny brand in that they peaked at one point and then they kind of submerged underground but we're seeing a really big resurgence in terms of the brand there's been a lot of stuff that they've come out with recently that have been I don't want to say viral but viral-esque or viral adjacent you know those jelly tint things now I'm personally they're they're not for me but you know I get that a lot of people are into them they've done it really really well with a lot of their makeup recently but I feel like they've escalated in their price of late I remember when you could get their bronzer contour and they made it smaller then but the smaller size was like the same price and I was like what on earth and they were like saying oh yeah people were finding it was going off before they could use all of it and I'm like okay that's fine but don't make it the same price really really strange anyways that's a really weird, stupid and pointless ramble, but I am definitely interested in this. Do I need more primers? I absolutely don't, but I will definitely be keeping an eye out for this and maybe trying to see if I can find um, some YouTubers, etc., who have similar kind of skin conditions to me and see how they get on with it because I'm not saying no, but I'm saying I have kind of primers that I'm quite happy with. I'm getting my skincare under control. So I don't think this is a need for me at the moment. And when I put it to you guys, you were kind of thinking the same thing. 16% of you loved it, 62% said not for me, and 21% of you said that you're gonna wait to see some reviews. Then this next one falls quite in the category of Angelica Nickfiss, who asked for this because I am a little bit confused by this. This is the Too Faced Born This Way mini eyeshadow palettes, and there's two styles. Now, I can kind of understand why they came out with this because the Born This Way eyeshadow palettes were quite popular they had the stripped they had the uh, born this way nude and then they had like the cosmic crush which had the same sort of layout and from what I understand I actually have the born this way nude and the formula is actually pretty decent it's quite good do I think it necessarily warrants the price tag no I don't and this one definitely does not warrant the price tag in my opinion it is at the moment just exclusive to beauty bay so even if you go on to Too Faced you can't get it through there it just is exclusive to beauty bay which is a weird one for Beauty Bay to be like yeah this is the thing that we're gonna go for and if you guys watched my shorts or my shorter videos on this you will know uh, that these cost 35 euro 25 each holy shit for six shades and they are there's mattes and there's shimmers but that's it there's nothing else it's not like a multi-chrome it's not like a flake it's not like there's a cream powder in there it's your generic shades I do however like the color stories that's the thing so we'll talk about first maybe the cold smolder because that's a little bit more my vibe They have basically said that this is made for people with a more cool skin tone Personally, I kind of think if you like it use it I like the more kind of taupey grey sort of undertones of this. It's very 90s-esque 
However, I, we just talked about the Makeup by Mario, right? Yes, I know the Makeup by Mario is all mattes and this has some shimmers in it, which I do like and I do appreciate. But when you think about the fact that this is six shades and Makeup by Mario is a brand owned by a makeup artist and they are charging 59 euro for 12 matte eyeshadows, I'd sooner pay an extra 24 euro to have an extra six shades, you know? Um, the price is bonkers to me. If this was 24 euro, I'd, I'd probably think about it. There's something about this that reminds me a little bit of the Vive palette that came out, the 90s palette. T-E-A-S-E, -E, cause you know, we like a pun. And I have that as well, I do quite like it. I don't think maybe her shimmers are as strong as she needs them to be. I don't know, I don't know. This, it, I mean, it's on trend. We're seeing a lot more kind of brands come out with these sort of color stories. So I'm not against it in that sense. But the price really, really puts me off. Then the warm ember nudes. Again, they've basically said this is for people with a warmer undertone, which fair enough, of course, they've managed to put a pop of pink in there. It's surprised they haven't put a purple in there that's like two faced signature move. It's like, you know, a criminal leaves like their calling card, like the Joker or whatever. That's Too Faced calling card. It's here's a bit of pink, here's a bit of purple. It's like, okay. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with a colour story in this. I'm not critiquing the colour story. I'm critiquing the price. Again, they haven't said, hey, we're talc free or we've done this or we've taken out certain chemicals to make it so that it's safer or whatever. There's nothing like that. Yes, it is vegan and cruelty free. We love that. But beyond that, I could use that 35 euro and get some really interesting shades from some indie brands. Like I could look at say the likes of Cosmic Brushes and what I could get for 35 euro from them compared to this. Actually Cosmic Brushes, could you do maybe an interesting grayscale kind of taupey palette? Please and thank you because your formula is a banana. I don't get this at all. The colour stories, really, really nice, but they're about 10 to 15 euro too expensive for what they actually are. I'm not even going to talk about the fact that the pans are all different sizes because you guys know how I feel about that. And there doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason as to why they are the size that they are. Like it seems that they've kind of gone for the shimmers to be the smaller pans, which is like, okay, I guess. But what if you're like highlighting your brow, but I suppose you can highlight your brow bone or whatever with like a matte and that'll give you the same effect. I don't know, it just feels super, super disjointed to me. And you guys weren't big fans. When I showed you the cold smolder, 9% of you loved it, 74% said not for me, and 18% said too pricey. We saw similar sort of stats when it came to the warm ember nudes, 5% loved it, 82% said not for me, and 13% said that it was too pricey. Then we have Made by Mitchell, and it has been quite some time since we last saw an eyeshadow palette from him. So I do think this is quite noteworthy just on that basis alone. Alone. The last palette that we would have had from him was the M -M -M Mangoes. I do appreciate that he hasn't managed to put the triple M in there unnecessarily because I always feel really weird when I'm trying to go M -M 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 Mitchell because it feels like I'm stuttering or that I'm mocking somebody but I'm like how else am I meant to pronounce this? It's really strange. Anyways these are the iClouds palettes. The best place to probably buy them is through Made by Mitchell because they're £16 over there. Now if you're lucky enough to be in a country where you have a TikTok shop we don't have that over here in in Ireland you could probably get it a lot cheaper because Made by Mitchell seems to be doing really really well via the TikTok shop. You can get them for £16 each or you can bundle the four of them for £50. However they are €27 Euro each on Beauty Bit. I don't know about you but that seems like a crazy markup. Now I know that over on Made by Mitchell they're saying that these would generally be £19.50 which I don't know seems a bit expensive for a quad. Now part of where obviously the price is coming from is that packaging because as soon as you start to try and A put in a mirror that's increasing your price. B, you start to do some weird sort of shapes with the extern of the packaging. He's made it into that very recognizable M, or as Janet said, an effed up Alaska, which I loved. I thought that was really funny. Um, but C, as soon as you start to put in those weird pan sizes as well, because they are not square shaped, that will all increase your price. So I'd love to know, because I'm nosy, how much of this is down to 
like the price is down to those three factors because I don't know about you I could do with a quad that doesn't have weird pan shapes that isn't a weird pan or palette size and doesn't have a mirror if it meant that I could pay five to six pounds less you know like you could get it for like a tenner I don't know about you I'd be sooner there to get it for that so there's grey girlfriend which is like a really interesting grey scale each of these seems to have three mattes and one sort of a shimmery shade I quite like the look of Grey Girlfriend, as I've kind of said before, this is very much on trend at the moment. It almost looks like in these kind of, well, they're not quite swatches, but smashed pans. The black almost looks a little bit creamy, but it does seem to be that it's the standard matte formula. Now, I'm personally quite excited to see Mitchell dive back into eyeshadows because he did quite well when he first came out with his, was it like Head in the Clouds or Feet on the Ground palettes? They were pretty popular and then he they just kind of faded off. I'm excited to see him do that because his last couple of palettes were about like the Got Milk palette was not good at all. So I think this could be a great redemption arc for him. I think that the Blue Your Mind is quite interesting. I particularly like that bluey purple shimmery shade. I think it's quite interesting that he's put like almost this aquamarine blue in there as well. I think the color combination of this is quite nice. It's very easy to do a monochromatic palette, but I feel like he's curated this so that it isn't like exactly expected. I think that one in particular is extremely strong. Then we have the Keep Em Green quad and this is essentially quite tropical based. I appreciate that they put in a yellow, kind of like a blue toned green and more of a yellowy toned green. So there's a lot that you could do here to potentially blend shades in there. Do I think that this is necessarily a one-stop shop for a look? I actually think you could do a pretty nice look with just that quad, but I'm a bit extra and a bit stupid. So I'd want a bit more. I think the most expected is the little pinky. It's exactly what you'd expect from a monochromatic palette. You know, it has the, the light, the medium, the dark, which is grand, perfect. They say that there's one shade there that's a topper, but the fantastic Rude Velvet who's over on TikTok. If you haven't followed them, just grateful, just grateful. Go and sort that out straight away. They did say that they swatched it and it felt more like a shimmer to them, so who knows? Um, these are fine. These are fine. Um, I think personally, maybe a bit too pricey for what they are. I don't love the palette shape, but I'm an old woman. <laughs> I'm really particular about things, and all I can think of is how on earth would I store this? That kind of slightly drives me a bit nuts. I'm hoping that this is signaling that maybe Made by Mitchell will do some more eyeshadow palettes and go beyond maybe a quad, maybe a nice nine pan palette. That would be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I think, I think this is decent. When I put it to you guys, the pink palette did okay, 16% of you loved it. The gray toned palette, 22% loved it. The blue toned one, 32% loved it. And the green toned palette was a 25% love it. Then the next couple of items that we're talking about are not ones that I managed to get to you guys. So these are all a surprise. I know, what a wonderful world we live in. This is Huda Beauty and this is the Faux Filler Ultra Shine Lip Gloss. This was initially kind of spotted in somebody's makeup bag at one point or a shopping bag and people were like oh my god bought it look lads it's just essentially a lip gloss and it comes in six shades and there's a crystal clear one which is fair enough there's a deep brown there's a pinky brown rose caramel brown a deep a clear a light peachy nude and a light pink this is apparently going to come out from march 13th worldwide do you know what i <sighs> We've seen a lot of lip glosses over the last couple of months. Like you can't move for all of the lip glosses, lip oils, which by the way, listen to me, they're the same thing. <laughs> I will die on this hill. They are the same thing. I'm sorry, but they are. We've seen a lot of these. However, Huda hasn't really stepped into this. So it's interesting to see her do that. We've also seen in the last week or two that Huda has said that she wants to come back to her role as CEO. And there's a whole bunch of changes with that brand. The kind of sub brand of glowish is apparently going as well so keep that in mind if you have any things that you really want to pick up maybe do that now because it'll be going she says it basically doesn't vibe with her which i think is quite interesting now i think these look very very pretty on the lips based upon what we're seeing there's definitely that glossy glassy sort of a look is this new no i wonder how much of this 
was kind of put forward when Huda was not the CEO. I'd love to know, is she necessarily like vibing with this? Is this really her kind of aesthetic? I don't know, I don't know. They look fine. It would be very dependent on the price. If this was anything over 24 euro, I would just walk away. Um, I say walk because that's all my body is capable of. I, I mean, I think it's okay. Nothing worth saying beyond that. This next one, I am extremely excited about. I got an email on this because I'm signed up to Adept Cosmetics newsletter and they said, save the date. This is coming out March 15th, part of their pre-order and this is Cyborg Choir. And it kind of looked like they were maybe doing some sort of like a Matrix tribute, which I suspect that this is. Ha, ah, it's going to be $79. It's not limited edition. So if you cannot get it straight away, do not worry. You'll be able to get it at another time. So I think that's really, really good. They said that the pre-orders will begin to ship the first week in April. However, if we can send it to you sooner, we will. I really appreciate that straight away being very, very transparent. Look, what Adept does really well are their shimmers. The mattes are quite interesting. I wouldn't say that I'd die for them. I think that maybe that yellowy shade is quite interesting and the purple is interesting. Beyond that, I'm not really really that bothered about those shades. However, those shimmers, look at the swatches. They are gorgeous. Every time I see an Adept palette, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna get it. And then I inevitably get it. And I feel like this is going to be another one of those. They just get me. I love the way they've swatched this. It is so, so beautiful. There are codes, by the way, to get like 10% off, like say, Makeup on your radar, who I get an awful lot of information from. They have a code as radar10, you get you 10% off, so that's $7.90. So you'll be able to get it for like $72.10, which isn't bad. Um, I think they're very smart in that they're playing to their strengths, which are their shimmers. I'm again not saying that their mattes aren't good, but I mean, I don't know about you, but the things that catch my eye here are in fact the shimmers. They make me want to weep. I think particularly those more like uh, lavendery pastel -y shades are very, very interesting to me. Now, let me try and do a devil's advocate for myself. Do I need this? No, I actually think that there's a couple of shades here that I could probably dupe out with existing shades uh, from brands like Gloss Gods, like for instance, their Color of Rain palette. I definitely think I could take, you know, that blue to purple lavendery shift one. I definitely think that I have a dupe of that from Gloss Gods. And I think I could actually dupe quite a few of these from that. I'm saying this more for myself than for you, if I'm 100% honest. I don't need it. I know I don't need it. And I think I need to be a little bit more clever. Now, bearing in mind, I say this, what I say and what I actually do tend to be quite different things. It is interesting though, it's quite an interesting colour story. I can't really see how I could use the mattes together, but I often find that I kind of forget about that when it comes to an Adept palette and I just pull out another existing matte palette that I have, like a Beauty Bay or whatever, and they work really, really well with that. So for now, I think the fact that this isn't limited edition, I don't feel the FOMO, I don't feel like this is a, oh my God, I must get this, or it's going to be out of my life forever. No, chill out, Teresa. You're fine, you don't need this straight away. You're all right. Let me know what you guys think. Are you interested in this? I think it is quite pretty, but I could probably do without it. I feel like this next launch kind of flew under the radar and this is Be Perfect and they have their kind of sub-brand Mrs. Glam, which I don't 100% understand exactly how that operates. I find that Be Perfect, their best launches tend to be the Stacey Marie. They get the most hype. But I wanted to talk about this one because nobody seemed to be talking about it and there doesn't seem to be anything necessarily wrong with the palette. I actually think this is pretty decent for an everyday palette or as my gorgeous friend Wilma would say, a Daywalker palette. This is the Showstopper 2 palette, 37 euro 95. I will say the most showstopping bit is probably that bright pink blush. I think it's gorgeous. What is kind of confusing me a little bit here is that we have those really pretty pink shimmery shades, but we don't have any matte that necessarily correspond with them. And I feel like that's a real kind of missed opportunity. They say that they have their their essentials, warm, pinks, bright, and cool tones, which are complementary 
supplemented with four multi-use face powders. My general feeling is any time that I see a palette that incorporates face powders, it never goes that well because inevitably you're going to exclude somebody. Like you may look at this palette and kind of go, oh my God, the shades of the eyeshadow are great, but I am too fair or I'm too dark to get these particular shades to work for me. And I think that kind of a strange thing to kind of do these days is to come out with kind of palettes that don't seem to link in with the needs of the consumer. I will also say there's something about this, maybe it's just like the rows of those shimmers that give me an ever so slight, and I mean so slight, so vague, little link in with the Blend Bunny Dollhouse palette, just, and I mean very, very slightly. I can see how this could be used for bridal, like there's definitely like your little warm tones in there. I think it's a bit of a stretch to say that they have cool tones. I guess they've like maybe two or three cool tones, but I'm like, oh, can you really advertise it as being cool toned when that's the case? I mean, I think it's totally fine. Maybe this might be more for somebody who's like an MUA. Although I feel like MUAs probably wouldn't get use out of this. I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things about the Mrs. Glam kind of sub brand. Some people really, really love it. I've never bought anything Oh, actually, no, I tell a lie. I definitely do have one Mrs. Glam, um, I think. <laughs> Maybe I do. <laughs> My collection is ridiculous. Let us not discuss that. I do plan uh, when I get more time to actually walk you through it, but that's for another day. Um, you see, the thing is, I really, I, I like Be Perfect. They are an Irish brand. I love being able to support an Irish brand. But for me, this is just a bit like, hmm, hmm. I guess I know you could use that pinky blush to like use it as an eyeshadow. I don't know, it's a very brave pink shadow, I kind of like that. I think that's quite fun. But there's something about that bright pink that almost doesn't mesh with the rest of it. You know, like that thing in Sesame Street, like one of these things that does not quite belong, one of these things is not quite the same. The pink blush seems to be it for me. It just feels a little bit disjointed. But I mean, I hope it goes well for them. It's not, it's not the worst, but also a little bit strange. Then I saw this over on Trend Mood and I couldn't believe that they said this. For their 25th birthday celebration, NYX have a new birthday mega butter gloss keychain in 25 karat gold for $10. And the bit that I couldn't believe was, oh my God, NYX has been around for 25 years? They're almost as old as me. I'm 33. I know, hard to believe. Mad that, to think that that brand has been around for a quarter of a century. And um, they really do love using the word butter. Although I find it very weird to include the word butter when relating to makeup in general. You know how people are like, oh, it spreads like butter. And I'm like, clearly you do not keep your butter in the fridge. <laughs> I've learned a lot about you. Uh, I use Kerrygold and it comes straight from the fridge and it's hard as a rock. So I don't know if I necessarily want my lip glosses to be like the butter that I have. And this is meant to be limited edition, it's coming soon, and they say that there's a new finish of their butter gloss bling in the shade BLG BO3, Big Spender, Hustla, and more. They haven't given an exact date, but it is coming soon. And as I said, these are pictures that have come over from trend mode. I think particularly that gold one is quite interesting. And for $10, I think it's pretty good. The thing that bugs me, can I say, is that bloody star key chain thing that seems to be coming along the side of it that makes it look so tacky it does look like it came as part of like a kid's magazine <sighs> and the thing is nyx is really good quality so why are they cheapening their stuff in that way it's strange to me i do think this is an interesting sort of um, a foray for them so i would definitely look into that this next one i am beside myself i am next to myself i am i don't know where my body is essentially with this one because i'm extremely excited about this nomad cosmetics are known for doing their destination palettes and it is very very clear we're coming near to St. Patrick's Day the most fantastic day of the year where we all celebrate Ireland Hold up. <laughs> this is where my patriotic weirdness comes out and it is so so clear that this is an Irish palette or a palette that is dedicated to Ireland <laughs> I'm so excited uh, I'm loving the tones of green that they've shown oh my god the little harp emblems uh, so excited it's really really clear that they're linking in with Cove with Titanic it sounds like they're doing something along the Wild Atlantic Way. At the moment, I only have like these shots of eight different shades. 
oh, I hate to say it, but I know I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to get it. I am Irish. I, I'm so excited. As I'm filming this, the whole thing hasn't been revealed yet. Probably as you're watching this, you know what it looks like. I, I can't actually emotionally cope. <laughs> I'm so excited. That's not healthy. I shouldn't get this excited about an eyeshadow palette that I know that I don't need. But I do enjoy Nomad Cosmetics formula and I feel like they've kind of been amplifying things over the last while. And I mean, look, uh, I love my country. <laughs> I feel like I'm weird. Um, so this excites me, the fact that there's some greens, there's some blues. There's a really interesting bluey, purpley toned shimmer. Ah... Uh, I like it. I also love the pictures that they've been using of fucking sheep and cliffs. And I'm like, yes, this is Ireland. We are all cliffs and sheep here. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I will end up getting it. That is a foregone conclusion. I am excited. Let me know what you guys think. The very last thing that I want to talk about is this sneak peek from Road Beauty, which is, in case you don't know, owned by Hayley Bieber, who is famed for being married to Justin Bieber. Or maybe she was famous before that. I don't really know. Anyways, it looks like we're getting some blush sticks. How many blush sticks have we come across at this point? A million. However, I will say I'm a little bit intrigued because that shade of blush that she's applying onto her cheek, it looks so perfect like it, it, it's the perfect tone for her it looks beautiful and it l literally looks like she's actually just blushing it looks so natural so pretty i quite like blush sticks uh you guys know i have quite dry combo skin so i find that kind of cream based formulas work really really well for me because it bears in mind that my skin is a little bit of a nightmare and it doesn't show up the texture in the same way yeah, I mean, this isn't easy for me to get. I'd have to, like, go through Rogue Beauty themselves. But I've heard great things about their products so far. I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. I also see there's, like, an orangey terracotta. Excuse me. Very, very nice. As I said, though, this is a sneak peek. So we don't know exactly what the rest of the shades are going to look like. But I am for sure intrigued. Anyways, my gorgeous friends, that is it for this week's new makeup releases. Let me know what you guys think in relation to anything or just drop a comment down below because it really does help with this general series. But I do have my favourite comment and this is from my gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful friend, Wilma Fingerdew, who of course has their own channel over here on YouTube. Check them out and I live for this comment. They say, Goody Pile was my drag queen name in high school. Wilma knows that my favourite thing is when she says, that was my drag name in high school. So I like to think that when she says this, it's just a little for me, so thank you. And that, my gorgeous friends, is it. However, I did see that I've, uh, as I filmed, a little uh, notification coming from Wilma, who's talking about maybe going onto TikTok. So, my gorgeous friends, if you do follow Wilma over on YouTube, etc., keep an eye out. Looks like she'll be coming to TikTok. I'm beside myself with excitement. So keep a little eye out. Yeah, I don't know if I can include that. Fuck it, I'm including it. This is my channel. I'll do what I want. Let's promote Wilma. But my gorgeous friends, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate it. As I said before, do please like, comment and subscribe. That helps so much with this teeny tiny little channel to grow. And that's what we want, to grow and change to some degree. But my gorgeous friends, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous weekend and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.